Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble garage here at Stratified. Now, we're no strangers to these cars, this chassis. This happens to be our Gen 1 development car, and it's a thoroughly enjoyed car. We've done a whole bunch of mods to it. We've taken it to the track. We really enjoy the simplicity and the purity of this platform. It is rear wheel drive, limited slip, manual transmission, low weight, and this two liter, in the case of the Gen 1, DI engine with both port and direct injection. Some of the things that are, have really, are really good about this car is its ability to be modified. It's almost like Subaru designed this with modification in mind. You know, they put in two sets of injectors so you don't have to add anything more to increase your fueling headroom. The car is easy to work on. And you know, just to encourage us to modify these cars more, they didn't give it a ton of power from the factory. So what we're gonna have for you next are two builds that solve that power problem. This is a, a little bit of a, of a different build than what we usually have. We have a lot of turbo Subarus, but not a lot of them that start out naturally aspirated. However, if you choose to force induce your FRS, BRZ, 86, what have you, uh, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with some really nice results. So this car is a Gen 1 2 liter motor JDL turbo kit, flex fuel, 2860 turbo so nothing crazy nothing big we're running about 14 pounds of boost and here's the final pull on flex fuel uh, compared to pump gas so on our dyno it's 298 wheel horsepower 240 foot pounds of torque to the wheels on a dyno jet this is much closer to 340 345 wheel we didn't want to go above that but really what I want to point out is just how once it spools which is not super late I mean right past 3000 rpm in fourth look at that torque look at that flat plateau uh, this engine flows really nicely uh, it flows really nicely compared to for example the one in the WRX that FA20 higher compression better flowing motor and and this is where you get a really awesome power band uh, all the way to redline so very happy with how this turned out the motors are not exactly designed for force induction you might want to consider extra cooling you might want to consider reinforcements like rods pistons if you really want to uh, abuse it on force induction but this just shows you that the motor flows well and when you throw a turbo on it and only 14 pounds of boost uh, and some ethanol uh, then it, it is just the results are really really great and on a light car like this it should be really awesome So behind us, we have, well, we have Alex, another Alex, <laughs> and uh, his 2017 BRZ. It's got the nice red manifold, and uh, also it has the HKS turbo kit. So we had Jared's car, who's actually come here um, with, you know, with Alex as well, and we tuned his uh, car on the dyno for JDL turbo kit and we turned it on, tuned it on flex fuel. Mm -hmm. So now we had a chance to do a similar flex fuel tune with a different kit. So since we have you here, tell us a little bit about your build and what kind of your goals were and what your expectations are. Uh, okay, so this is my 17 BRZ. I've uh, not been a stranger to eight sixes for a while now. I had one before this car, I had an FRS always dreamed of boosting it but never had the budget 
and then uh, sold that car and regretted it. So I ended up buying this and fulfilling the dream of going turbo with it. it uh, it's been a good journey and I'm super excited. Should be rowdy, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Should be rowdy. Yes, um, so now, do you have any guesses on how much power it made? You, you remember what Jared's car made? Yeah, 298 on ethanol. Okay. okay. <laughs> so what do you think? 299. 299. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I'm hoping for 300. Hoping for 300. Jared, what do you think? Did it make more or less than yours? More, 100% more. 100% more. Why, why more? Um, I just believe that the HKS kit's a really good kit. Okay. And uh, I think the turbo is just a little bit bigger, so I think um, it's probably just pushing a little bit more power. You're, you're right on the money in terms of it being a little bit bigger. So it does spool a little bit slower, a few hundred RPM slower, but it does make a little bit more power. <laughs> so your guess is 299, is that your final guess? I guess for real one. So actually the car made on the last poll that you just walked in and saw, yeah. 327 holy. to the wheels. So <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that kills my expectations, holy, that's way more than I thought. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually 50 horsepower more uh, than on pump gas. On pump gas, your guys' cars were pretty similar. We were knock limited, uh, but once I threw in the, the ethanol, then we were able to add another 50 wheel. We're gonna unstrap it. Yeah. And then, gonna take it for a rip? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. <laughs> it's a little bit quicker than before. That is so fun. <laughs> All right, let's talk results, the meat and potatoes, as they like to call it. Not sure if that's what they call it, but let's talk some results. Uh, we've got Alex and Jared. Uh, they both have uh, turbocharged uh, FA20 cars, and we tuned them both uh, on our dyno, and we are here in an 86. Uh, our friends at AJ Racing has sent this uh, car to be tuned. It also has the HKS uh, turbo kit, but we're just waiting on some upgraded injectors and a map sensor. So funny, we have kind of the trifecta of the cars. Jared has an FRS, Alex has a BRZ, and this is an 86. Now, on to the results. The solid line are Alex's results, which are the HKS GT3 turbo kit uh, with upgraded injectors, upgraded map sensors, and on flex fuel. So that's compared to the dotted line, which are Jared's JDL turbo kit, upgraded injectors and all, all the goodies, externally wastegated versus the HKS kit, uh, and also running a very similar ethanol mixture on flex fuel. You can right away see from these curves that there's two main differences. The JDL kit, I will say, has the GTX 2860 turbo. And you can see that the 2860 turbo on the dotted line does have a faster spool and a faster response. So there's this area under the curve that the JDL kit uh, gets to faster to peak boost and peak torque faster. However, once they cross over you know about 45 5000 rpm you can see the larger turbocharger in the hks kit starts to pull away so they're running quite similar boost pressures between these these two kits uh, the jdl kit had an electronic boost controller the hks we just ran spring pressure because we didn't need anything more uh, and and you can see that the hks turbo has more top end which is just an indication of a better flowing larger turbocharger so which kit is best for you it really depends on kind of what your what your goal is the hks kit uh, made a very healthy over 300 of the wheels uh, the jdl kit uh, just touched 300 to the wheels torque they're very close in terms of peak numbers but again up top the hks kit uh, is a little bit stronger and then down low you get a slightly faster response from the externally gated jdl kit uh, i'm pretty sure that jdl does have quite a number of turbocharger 
options that you can you can opt in so a larger turbocharger in that kit would would give you that that top end um, back now it's really nice to see again that this motor flows well it flows really well up to about 300 you know 50 horsepower we can we can see that up up at the very top the HKS kit does start to have that characteristic kind of drop off after 6500 rpm and the JDL kit does not the reason for that is because we're starting to reach a, a bit of a flow restriction at some point at, as we're reaching 350 on our dyno and keep in mind that this is a Mustang dyno so we're reading 14% lower than what you see on a Dynojet so these cars are moving especially for their lightweight and uh, it's really nice to see the engine flow and the engine respond so I'm really looking forward to tuning and dialing in more of these turbo kits as these gen ones are starting to uh, be uh, you know get up in age people are experimenting experimenting with them more they're putting in uh, different turbocharger setups supercharger setups there's just such a joy to drive and to set up and easy to work on swapping injectors is only an hour uh, it's really a great platform to get involved with so get involved with these guys if you're looking for a real drive experience and boost them Enjoy them naturally aspirated. In any case, we're here to help you tune them and get the most from them. Until next time, cheers.